Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Joe Del Rossi. I'm the very proud superintendent of the Medford Township Public Schools. I'd like to welcome you to our sixth annual kindergarten parent informational night. Before moving into our program, I would like to recognize some of our key staff members who are responsible for this evening's program. First and foremost, Ms. Megan Chelly, our supervisor of instruction. She did most of the planning and heavy lifting for this program. She works very closely with our district's teachers on language arts literacy. Our facilitator for tonight's program, who did most of the planning, assigning staff, and coordinating the program, Ms. Melissa Slocum. She's a kindergarten teacher over at Kirby's Mill. Also, I'd like to recognize Mr. Andrew King. He's our district media production specialist. Mr. King is responsible for many of the video clips that you're going to see um, this evening. I'm working with our staff to make this program possible. Also, a lady who needs very little introduction, I know you've probably either spoken to her or will be, will be meeting with her shortly, Ms. Christina Watson, our registrar. So let's talk about the purpose of our meeting this evening. It's to provide you with an overview of today's kindergarten. And I stress today's kindergarten because it's surely different than the program we experienced when attending many years ago. We will not be discussing your child's schedule this evening or the lunch period or recess or health office procedures, so I want you to relax. All of this will be covered, hopefully, in person at Kindergarten Roundup in April. You will be seeing video clips this evening of our kindergarten classrooms that will give you a feel for our curriculum. Most importantly, we're going to be providing you with activities you can do with your child to help him or her get ready for kindergarten in September. So we have some broad-based goals that we hope to accomplish this evening. First, our programming has traditionally been very rigorous, but full-day kindergarten provides our teachers with time to truly reinforce concepts, provide a depth of understanding without rushing, and address other components of kindergarten that are developmental in nature and not non-academic, but just as important. Now, I want to tell you about a program called Sparklers. We offer some summer programming for incoming kindergartners that may benefit from reinforcement over the summer months. However, your child must be invited into this program. More information will be forthcoming after Roundup. Before turning the program over to Ms. Chelly, I want to share with you that this is the first of a few events we have planned to assist you and your child in making a smooth transition to kindergarten. Kindergarten Roundup this year is, is tentatively scheduled sometime during the month of April. Dates and times will be forthcoming from your child's principal. This will be an opportunity for you and your child to meet your principal, teachers, and receive specific information about their kindergarten experience. So, I want to thank you for participating in tonight's program. I know you're going to enjoy it. And at this time, I'm going to turn our program over to our language arts literacy supervisor, Ms. Megan Chelly. Megan? Thank you, Dr. D. Good evening, and welcome to Kindergarten Information Night. My name is Megan Chelly, and I am the supervisor of literacy instruction for Medford Township Schools. I've had the pleasure to present at this night for the past five years. However, tonight I have the honor to introduce to you some very special people. The following educators are your hosts for this evening. Ms. Melissa Slocum from Kirby's Mill Elementary, Ms. Leslie Irwin and Ms. Dana Rappenecker from Taunton Forge Elementary, and Ms. Kristen Seltzer from Cranberry Pines Elementary. These four kindergarten teachers will share the information with you tonight about reading, writing, math, and building oral language in kindergarten. Before each segment, you will preview a video that supports the content area. Please don't panic. These videos take place mid-year. This is not what September looks like. Now is the time. Grab your popcorn, sit back, and enjoy getting to know kindergarten in Medford. So shared reading is an important part of our kindergarten day, and it's when the entire class interacts with the text. So we introduce things like sight words and conventions, and we read it many, many times. So we don't see it just once, we see it all the time throughout the week. Here we go. Look what I see. Look what I see. I see 
an octopus. I see an It includes octopus. big books, it includes charts and poems. It's something that the whole class can see, so it has to be visible for everybody. Shared reading emphasizes looking for word wall words in text. It emphasizes how to use reading strategies by the teacher modeling sh that through shared reading. Um, and it also helps the children learn fluency by listening to the teacher read. Run, 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 as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. And off he ran. In shared reading, the children are also introduced to different types of text, fiction text, nonfiction text, biographies, as well as fantasy stories and uh, fictional stories. They're also taught the storyline, uh, the setting of the story, the problems in the story, so that they're able to retell stories on their own. Read Aloud is helping students to notice the important points of a nonfiction text or a fiction text or things that, that we just need to talk about, we need to discuss. What's the point of the story? What, what's happening in the story? What are you noticing? Are you inferring anything? What predictions do you have? And what's a non-fiction text or a non-fiction book? What does that mean? Gianna, what does that mean? It means that we're talking about a real thing. We are, we are talking about real things. Shared reading is important, it builds a bridge to guided reading. We're going to see our sight words. Um, Read them with me. I can read with me. Now remember, when we read with, we use the TH, with, like our thought. Guided reading is an important part of our day in kindergarten. We get the chance to meet in small groups and work on reading books that are at our just right level. And by choosing books that are at our just right level, we get a chance to practice various reading strategies to help us become better readers. Come on, Dad. What could that word be? What could he be saying to Dad? You're right. Come. See how that works? They sit at a horseshoe table in a small group and they read these little books that they are basically able to have success with. And we just take them from that point and we're able to teach them something in those books. And it's fun for them. They sit there because they feel very comfortable. Because they're in a small group, they feel very safe. Mm -hmm. Good job. A lot of our books early on in guided reading um, offer a lot of our sight words and the reason that we have a lot of the sight words is that that's familiar words that we have been practicing throughout the year. That word was green. What did you... <gasps> Maya used her reading strategy of looking at the picture. She looked at the person. And the bottom line is to make reading enjoyable for our students. Hi parents, I'm Mrs. Rappenecker and I teach kindergarten here at Taunton Forge. And today I'm going to talk to you about what reading looks like in the kindergarten classroom. And let me tell you, kindergarten has changed a great deal over these past years. And I want you to see what it looks like now for your child who will be joining our team. In Medford, we follow a Reader's Workshop model. And Reader's Workshop is about modeling and practicing. And when we come in in September, we take a lot of time to set up the procedures and the routines so that we can make Reader's Workshop successful. And I just want to go over a little bit of what our Reader's Workshop model looks like. It happens every day for 60 minutes. And the very beginning, we usually come here and we meet on the carpet. And this is where we make a connection to possibly a text that we read before or maybe even a personal connection. And then we have our mini lesson. And this is where we focus on a skill or a strategy that we want our child to use as a strong reader. And then after that, this is where we have our guided practice and our, the students are watching us model what it looks like and sounds like to be a good reader. And then the students will have a time to do independent reading where they're using that skill and strategy that they just learned about and they're using their reading bags and their book bins to practice that new skill and strategy. And then after that time, the kiddos have a chance to come back to the carpet and this is where we share and we have the opportunity to highlight the strengths and what we notice them using during reading time. 
As I mentioned during that reader's workshop model, the children have that independent reading time. And during that independent reading time, students participate in the daily five. And this is a time where they're going to move through five literacy centers. Those are read to self, read to someone, listen to reading, word work, and work on writing. During read to self, that's what it just sounds like. Students will read from their reading bags, their reading binders, they get a chance to read those level bins and read across multiple genres. Then there's read to someone. This is where they're reading with a friend. This offers accountability and confidence where they get a chance to share and discuss and even help each other. Word work is where we're working with our high frequency words, looking for the different parts of the words, and even being able to do some hands-on activity and manipulate those words. Work on writing, in the beginning of the year, we are working on that letter formation. We are working on sentence structure and conventions. We are then moving into writing stories. We will write nonfiction all about books and how-to books. And then we have our listen to reading. And this is where students get a chance to listen to books on CDs or the iPad. And this really helps with them hearing fluent reading as well as hearing new vocabulary. And then another part of our day is shared reading. And this is a special time where we really get a chance to dissect the text. Whether we are reading poems or nursery rhymes, big books, anything, this is where we are looking at the text line by line. We are looking for patterns. We are looking for our high frequency words, rhyming words, our punctuation. And this is also where the students get a chance to participate and practice in that fluent reading. Throughout the day, we read at all different levels through our shared read alouds. And this allows us to share some special books that we love and model that fluency for our students as well as build those comprehension skills. And as you can see, reading plays an important role in the kindergarten classroom, and reading truly comes to life in kindergarten. And one of my favorite quotes is that children are made readers on the laps of their parents. So we ask that you continue to read to your child every day. Guided reading takes place three to four days a week. We meet in a small group right here, and this is where the students are grouped at the same level because they have similar reading habits. And each time the group meets, we get a new book, and that's just right for them. We introduce a new skill, or we teach something, or reteach something in a typical guided reading lesson. We will do a book intro. Then the children, they have the chance to whisper, read, and this is where we get a chance to listen in and prompt the individual students when any errors are made to promote that self-correcting independently on the child's part. And this prompting teaches the students to be able to use those strategies that we have been learning during reading workshop and help them become independent readers. We want to make sure that we're using these strategies to help build strong, fluent readers. And then the last part is that we usually will start to talk about the text and we're asking those comprehension skills, those higher level thinking. And then students in kindergarten begin in a level A and we move through to a level E. Now a level A text, it's simple, it's built with mostly high frequency words. We're, we're really working on training our eyes to read across the text in that left to right direction. And you'll notice that the books have a lot of strong picture support. It's telling the story. As we move through to level B, we'll begin to notice there's more high frequency words. We will be introduced to some different punctuation. The pictures still support um, the story and we begin to notice a pattern of predictable text. Once we move into level C, which is where we usually tend to stay for a little bit, we are using our eyes to read. We are taking our finger out of the book. We begin to read for meaning. We start to notice that there is dialogue and we're really beginning to focus more on fluent reading and building our stamina. Once we get to level D and E, we are reading for meaning and building those strong comprehension and fluency skills as the structure of the story is more advanced. We do writer's workshop every day and this builds a strong foundation for the children in reading and writing. Every day in writing workshop we begin with a focus lesson and what that is is the children listen on the blog and we talk about the day's point. One way to add more detail to our stories 
is to have our characters talk. And this is so exciting. Draw the speech bubble around. It kind of looks like a circle and it has a point and it's coming out of my mouth. In Writer's Workshop, we start out with a focus lesson and the children bring their background knowledge into the day's lesson. So for today, we were talking about speech bubbles. So the children have their own writing folders, they go back to their tables, and they write about their experience. So we are guiding them to be the best writers that they can be. This way, it builds a classroom community because we are learning about them as writers and also the children as themselves. And the, this literacy independence is helping them with their fluency. It's helping them with their stamina. It's helping them, it's helping them learn to love reading and writing. So when we do word work, they are actually great at taking their packet and they know which activities to do. Writing every day builds a strong foundation for literacy. Children are reading every day and writing and with the combination of the two, they have a strong background to help them be the best that they can be. Hi friends, I'm Leslie Irwin. I'm a kindergarten teacher here at Totten Forge. Um, I've been teaching kindergarten for, I think, about 10 years now. It's been a while, but I just wanted to um, talk to you a little bit about writing and what you're going to see from your child when they start kindergarten next year. So I'm excited to share some things with you. We want to give you an idea, like I said, about the experience that your children will have in kindergarten with writing. And we're going to give you some practical and easy, fun activities you can do with your child to get them ready throughout the summer for kindergarten. So in kindergarten, we start with handwriting. That's really important because we can't write, write words without knowing how to form our letters. So we, do, we use something called the verbal path, and that's something that helps the children learn how to say their letters. Like for the letter H, pull down, across, and down, H. And when we do that, it helps them get it up here and they remember it that way. So the verbal path is really, really important for having them form their letters and, and it just, it's a quick, it's quick, it's only a couple letters, we'll share it with you, but letter formation we will help the children with. So we're going to help with that as we get started and throughout the, be the beginning of the year we're going to be working on that. We'll work on it throughout the whole year, but that's really important so we can lay the groundwork for getting our words and writing for writing workshop because writing workshop is it's amazing you'll see such a transformation in your child from September to June in their writing it's awesome we're we're so excited I've seen I can't wait to share with you but for the summer don't worry about the lines don't worry about the formation of the letters we just ask that maybe you could have them start at the top when they're writing their letters, we don't want to see what we call a push up, where you push up and then that's, we want to make sure that they have it in their, ingrained in their noodle that they pull down to write their letters. So, something that I want to talk about once we're finished with that, that letter formation is the writing workshop. And we do start writing workshop from day one, but it, it looks a little bit different. It's, it's just getting those pictures on the paper and writing, writing the sounds. Maybe they hear some sounds. So it's, it's a great, it's a great start. And it, the great thing about writing workshop is they start where they're comfortable. So that's why, that's why we love it. I want to talk to you about the writing development continuum. I call this like a developmental scale. I'm prefacing it by saying that every student is different. Every child is different. Not everyone will be at the same place at the same time. And usually when kindergarten starts, sometimes we see friends, they come in, the, continu the continuum starts with scribbles. So you would just see like a little bit of a scribble. And then it would be a scribble with letters. So you would see maybe like an E or the beginning form of an E with an I maybe. And then you see a string of letters. So your, your child will know what they're saying. They'll say, oh, I went to the store. And you will see E, F, W, L, G. It's one big string, but that's developmentally appropriate. So that's where they are on the continuum. And then we'll see sometimes your child will copy words from the environment. We call that environmental print. Like they'll see something at home like mom and they'll copy it and they'll write mom. And then 
well, they will use initial sounds to represent an entire word. So if they, if they said, oh, mom, look, I wrote, I love cats. You'll see I, L, and C. That's how they're saying, I love cats. That's how they're writing it. Once they do the initial sounds, you'll see ending sounds as well. So then on, on the continuum, it's the ending sounds that go with it. So I love cats would be I, L, V for love, and cats would be C, T. So that's what they would hear. So I love, well, cats would be C, S. So they would say, I love cats, and you would see I, L, V, C, S. And then you would see at the end of the continuum, it's the, your child's using sound spelling, and it may include some vowels. You may see some vowels in there. So I love cats, you would see I, and then you would see for love, L, O, V, and then cats would be C, A, T with the S. So there's a continuum. There's that, that developmental progress that you'll see throughout kindergarten. Now, um, in kindergarten, we do three types of writing. The writing that we cover in kindergarten, we do narrative writing, and this is really important for kindergarten. It's writing about events that happen to them. So we talk a lot about what they've done in, in their life, and then we write it. We put it on paper. Uh, we do informative writing. We write how-to books, like how to brush your teeth or how to make a sandwich. You'll see a lot of books like that. And we also write all about books, like what you know a lot about. Oh, I know a lot about soccer. All about soccer. So we'll write books about that. And we'll also write, a, we have opinion writing. So sometimes we'll maybe listen to a book on tape, or I should say CD. We'll listen to a book on CD and then they'll have to respond to that book. So if they read, if we read the pigeon went, goes to school, we would have to say, well, what do you think the pigeon liked the best about school? Well, the pigeon liked snack. Or did you like this book? Why did you like this book? And they would respond. So those are the three types of writings that, writing that we'll do in kindergarten. And I have to say, you will be amazed at the progress you will see in your child's writing throughout the year. It is wonderful. So I have, to, I have to say, please try not to fix their work. It's so hard. Sometimes you're like, well, wait, they didn't spell that right. In kindergarten, we call this inventive spelling. Inventive spelling is so important. And it's what the child hears. That's what they're putting on the paper. And that's okay. So that's, that's a super important thing to remember when your child's writing. Whatever they're putting down, that's okay because that's where they are developmentally. So that's something that we, we strive for when we're doing our writing workshop in the classroom, and I'll show you a picture of what that looks like. Now, there are some things that you could do to help your child get ready for kindergarten writing. I'm going to show you some things um, uh, that we recommend you do, like learning how to write your name for your child. That's important with a capital letter, and then the rest are lowercase. So we'll share some of those things with you. You can actually have a writing bin at home. This is something really fun. The dollar store has so many great writing things that you can use at home. At home, Highlighters, crayons, markers, sparkly pencils. There's so many wonderful things, and there's so much fun paper you can buy there. And if you just get a little bin and you put some fun things in there with your child, they can use those things and they'll get excited about writing so and you can the most important thing about writing though is talking about what they're going to write about so you want to say hey what did we do yesterday <gasps> that's right we went to the park well what did we do at the park <gasps> we went on the swings we did go on the swings we went really high well let's try to write about that and then they'll draw a picture to match so those are some fun things that you can do to get your child ready for kindergarten. Make sure that you're talking about the things that you do so they have ideas that they can write about and make sure you're making it fun. We don't, we, we always try to make it fun here in kindergarten. So I'm excited to be with your child next year and I hope that you enjoy the progress that you see when they come home with their writing. Math in kindergarten is so much fun. It's really focused around the children, us working as a whole group, them working independently. We get to do a lot of hands-on activities. We're using counters, we're using cubes. Um, we're building things up and breaking them apart. How many bunnies? What can we do to solve this problem? 
so in kindergarten we spend uh, a lot of time again building number sense and so the children will come in and practice handwriting numbers each morning on their whiteboards um, they are able to um, play games and hide numbers from each other and then write the number that's missing So in the beginning of the year, um, we're really focused on learning numbers 1 through 10, being able to count fluently through those numbers and write those numbers correctly. That's really our foundation for math in September. Right now, at this point in the school, the school year, we're working on counting up to 100, and they have so much fun doing that. We use our 100 chart every morning. We're counting by tens, we're counting by twos, so we really get to mix it up every day. What can we do to show joining? Adding two groups together. Circle it. Way to go! For us, we seem we find that it's one of the most fun parts of our day um, because we do get to work together. Students get to come up and use the active board. We problem solve together, um, and it's really just preparing them for things that they actually use in their real life. So here's ten plus how many more, Bode? Five. Let's see it. It's been really exciting to have a full day uh, kindergarten. Um, here in Medford just because we've been able to spend a lot of time on really deepening uh, the understanding of math concepts and, and number sense and how important it is to spend time developing the language around math. Our math lesson has a lot of different components um, and it's good components for us as teachers to be able to evaluate and assess them and just see what they're understanding and see what we can go back and um, reinforce during small group instruction. When we're adding and joining two groups together, what math sign do we use? Usually for each math lesson, they'll have anywhere from two to three problems that they need to work on independently. So then again, that gives myself and an assistant in the classroom more time to walk around and pull some students if need be and work one-on-one -on -one with each child. Math is something that they use in every day, you know, and we spend time pointing it out. Where do you see numbers? Um, why is it important to count? Learning how to count up, learning how to count down. Uh, all the skills that you use uh, in your everyday life that you probably take for granted. Ten plus some more. How many more, Eli? One. How do you know? Uh, the kids are learning how to initiate those conversations and, and really use them in their everyday lives here. The most exciting thing about teaching uh, kindergarten and specifically with math is to really listen to how the kids come up with uh, the answer or, or how they share their thinking and, uh, and to make those connections of uh, what they're learning to their own lives. Uh, that's probably the most exciting part about teaching math. Hello! My name is Kristen Seltzer and I'm a kindergarten teacher at Cranberry Pines. I'm here tonight to talk to you about our math program. The K-5 Envision Mathematics 2020 series is part of the Savas Realize platform online on our Clever page. It's the only math program to combine problem-based learning and visual learning to deepen students' conceptual understanding. How do the lessons start? Well, they start this way, with a solve and share, problem-based learning. So the children have to think critically, evaluate options, and collaborate and present solutions to real-world problems. Then we move into visual learning and convince me. The visual learning bridge is the video that the children can access on their Chromebooks. But convince me is a guiding question to solidify underlying math concepts. Then we move into guided and independent practice and problem solving. Each lesson combines lesson quick checks, with which the children do on their Chromebooks, observational assessments, and they have auto-generated reports. All of this informs our teaching. The focus is on the students' needs with intervention activities and resources for all learning levels. It lends itself to guided math. Guided math is a structure of teaching math that allows teachers to meet the needs of all learners. So teachers start out with a mini lesson and we pull small groups and while we're working with these groups, the rest of the class is rotating around math centers to enhance their learning. So this is done during the independent practice portion. 
There are some new and exciting components of this math program. Three-act math, pick a project, and literacy maths. And they enhance learning beyond the math standards. The children get to explore real-world problems. What is it that we teach in kindergarten? Well, we have the New Jersey Student Learning Standards for Kindergarten Math, Counting and Cardinality. The children know number names and counting sequences. They count to tell the number of objects, and they compare numbers. Operations in Algebraic Thinking. The children understand addition as putting together and adding to, and understand subtraction as taking apart and taking from. Number Operations in Base 10. The children work with numbers 11 through 19 to gain foundations for place value. Measurement and data. They describe and compare measurable attributes, classify objects, and count the number of objects and categories. Geometry. Identify and describe shapes. Analyze, compare, create, and compose shapes. The children also have access to Zerm. This is on our Clever page where they can play games. There are 150 lessons. They can play these games to enhance their learning and they really enjoy playing it. We also have a math specialist that pushes into the classroom as well to offer support. Hi, I'm Melissa Slocum and I'm a kindergarten teacher at Kirby's Mill School in Medford. I'm here to talk to you about talking with your student. To prepare your child for kindergarten, the most important thing that you can do is talk to them. As simple as that sounds, it is the most important thing you can do to get your child ready to read and write as they enter school. In order to write sentences and read sentences, children need to be able to speak in sentences. So I'm going to tell you exactly how you can get your child to talk and talk so they can get ready to read and write. Since so many of us have been spending time in our homes, I figure it would be a natural way for you to help your child talk. We're going to travel through each room of your house and give you activities to encourage talking with your child. Let's start in the dining room or kitchen. In the dining room and kitchen, at dinner time, you could have conversations about your child, highs and lows. Each day when they come home and you're at the dinner table, ask them what their high was. What was the best thing that happened to them that day? And then ask them their low. What was something that wasn't so great? Make sure to ask them to speak in full sentences. Instead of asking a WH question like who, what, where, or when, say, tell me more about, and get your child that opportunity to speak. Make sure you share your day with them as well. You would be surprised how many kindergartners don't know what their parents' jobs are. Talk about what you do during the day. What's your job? What are your responsibilities? Build that vocabulary with them. Let's move to the family room in the living room. Here, label furniture. As silly as that sounds, children need to start to put things in categories. So labeling furniture, end table, couch, coffee table, those things will not only promote talking and building vocabulary, but it will teach them about letters and words. So label that furniture and have fun doing it. Also, have your children call their grandparents, their aunts and uncles on the telephone. Teach them how to have a telephone conversation. What that means to ask a question, get an answer, talk about the answer they give. We're in a world of texting and emails. Teach your child how to have a phone conversation. How about in that home office or wherever your desk is in your home? Have your children look at a calendar. Talk about the days of the week, the months of the year. Talk to them about seasons and holidays. Let them know that there's a difference between winter and Christmas. If you do that on a daily basis, your children will be able to talk about today is Wednesday, tomorrow is Thursday. Build that vocabulary with them. Remember, the goal is for them to read and write. If they can talk, they can read and write. Even the laundry room can be a place to promote verbal skills. Sort laundry. Why are we putting all these clothes together? Oh, they all have zippers. These, this pile is short sleeves. 
That's long sleeves. That's your sister's clothes. That's dad's clothes. These are the dark clothes. These are the white clothes. Have your children talk about those categories. That will not only help them with their reading and writing, it will help with their math skills. Remember, talk, talk, talk. Even when you're in the car at that garage and you take your ride in the car, play rhyming games. I see a tree. Can you think of a word that rhymes with tree? B, B rhymes with tree. The car is a great time to talk with your child and build those rhyming skills. You could even do letter hunts. I see a letter A on that sign. Can you find a sign that has a letter B as you drive down the road? Great, you found the letter B, now find the letter C and go through the whole alphabet. The idea again is to build that verbal language. Even when you go into the attic or the basement, look at old photos. Talk about what's happening in the photo. Make your child speak in full sentences. That was the day we went to the zoo and we saw the elephant. Remember how it was splashing in the water? Make them use those full sentences to speak so that when it comes time to write, they'll be able to write in full sentences. The bedroom. In that place, read, read, read. There's nothing like a nighttime story. Ask them questions about the books they're reading. Ask them deep questions though, not a question that can be answered with one word. What was your favorite part and why? Was this book a book that you liked? When they say yes, make them tell you why. Get away from words like, it was good. What, what's another word you could use for good? Enrich that vocabulary. The stairs, yes, even the stairs in your home can be a place to build verbal skills. Put a picture on each step, maybe a picture of animals on each step. As your child walks up each step, they have to say something about the animal, not just naming it, but telling you something about it. Oh, that's a dog. Dogs have tails. This dog has spots. Make them stretch their thinking out. The bathroom. The bathroom is a great place to teach sequencing. What do we do when we brush our teeth? What do we do first, next, then last? When we wash our hair, what are the steps that we do? Make your child talk through those actions so they can tell others how to do that. That's a great way to build verbal language. Finally, the kitchen, the hub of anybody's home. This is a great place to talk about problem solving. Oh my goodness, I spilled on the floor. What should we do? Talk through that problem solving with your child. Even if you have to model and they repeat it back to you, it's building those verbal skills. So all this information is going to be on the district website, the activities that I've talked to you about, and even more so that you can use your home to help your child build their verbal skills. Remember, children need to be able to talk in full sentences in order to read and write full sentences. That's one of the best things you can do to prepare your child for kindergarten. I hope you enjoyed this evening's information session. There's a lot of information to take in. This link will be available on our website. A few reminders. On our website, under the Parent tab, you will find the Incoming Kindergarten Information tab. Here, you will find upcoming events, registration information, read alouds by kindergarten teachers, tonight's presentation, as well as activities you can do with your child to help prepare them for kindergarten. Take some time to explore our website. Finally, please be in contact with Mrs. Christina Watson if you need to register your child for the upcoming 2021-2022 school year. Here's her contact information. We look forward to you and your child joining our Medford family next year. Speaking of family, here's our Medford kindergarten family. Take a moment to meet the kindergarten teachers and a sneak peek into their classrooms.
Hi kindergarten families, welcome to Allen's School. Um, you're going to get to see a couple of our kindergarten classrooms and some of the things that we do in here. at Chairville. We're so excited to have you next year. When you come to school for kindergarten, you're going to learn about words and about numbers and about reading, and we're going to have a lot of fun and make some great friendships. So we can't wait to see you here. Thank you for your time this evening. It has been a pleasure. Stay safe and please be well.